Hi there. I'd like to talk about trust today. And I think that it's very important that we trust in ourselves when we are healing. And yet it's something that isn't often talked about. Um, or maybe it is, but it's not really understood. Now, I remember one time being told, Zaza, you must trust in yourself. And I went over and over that in my head, thinking, you must trust yourself, you must trust yourself. And then I thought back to times when I've quite clearly not trusted in myself. And to give you some idea of what I might mean by that, is that when I lived in Brighton, I went through a stage of um, having real paranoia about did I turn off the lights, had I turned off the cooker, had I locked the door, and I have no idea why that why that happened, but it becomes habitual and it make you you become worse. Now, years previously, I'd had a friend who used to have this strange. Um, I don't know really what you call it, but this strange thing that she had going on whereby when we were driving along, she would suddenly just stop the car, get out of the car, go round the car three times or something, then get back in the car, and tap away at the steering wheel before we could drive off because she'd had some sort of strange thing that had appeared to her, come to her, that if she didn't do this, something awful was going to happen. This is trust. This is also down to trust because these kind of like superstitions and things like this or these paranoias, all they are are fears. That's what they are. They're fears. They're thought forms. When we're, when we're moving along through life, if you're a very sensitive person, or even if you're not, you might feel, oh, this is something that's internal. This is something that's happening with me. But what it is, is it's, you're going through energy. And as you're going through energy, you might come into a a little area of energy where it's quite dense and harsh and dark and you need to throw some light into it but don't assume that just because you're in that space that those thoughts belong to you and that that is part of who you are. So this friend of mine she used to practice these strange um, these strange things she used to practice them um, she used to get uh, newspaper and like if she well not newspaper but she used to be like writing something and then she'd screw it up into a ball and then she'd say right I have to get this in the waste paper basket because if not then something awful is going to happen it was always something awful was going to happen if she didn't do it so she'd do best of three and she'd make sure that they went in what it went in if it didn't go in she'd go oh cancel that have to start again whatever and being around someone like that was quite eye-opening. So anyway, years later when I was in Brighton and I found myself practicing these strange peculiarities, I would lock my front door. I lived in the North Lane area at the time, for those of you who know Brighton. I'd lock my front door, I'd walk down the road, walk down North Street and I'd suddenly stop. I think, oh, have I shut the front door? Oh, I don't know, I'm not sure if I have. Turn around, go back. Unlock the front door, go in, just double check everything. Make sure I've turned off the lights, check the cooker, that sort of thing. Go back out, lock the door, go down the street and go, oh my God, have I locked the front door? And do the same thing again. It got to a point where I just thought, I, I, this is crazy, this is absolutely ridiculous, why am I doing this? This is just absolutely crazy, I have to stop this now. So I started to stop worrying about it and just say, you know what, if the front door's open, so be it. Who cares? It's only stuff. And in time, and it took a lot of time, this peculiarity dissolved into nothingness. Now, that's not the only fear that I have had to overcome, which again is down to trusting in yourself. I used to have these very dark images 
again, being an empath, these things happen when we're walking through thought forms and when we're walking through energies of thoughts that other people might have had that might not be so nice and that they have left them there because energy just doesn't just die. Once an energy is formed, it's there and what have you. Um, so I'm walking along and I would be, oh my god, what if there's somebody behind that corner and they want to do something awful to me? Um, say I'm walking along in the dark. And it became ridiculous. It would make me fearful of being outside in the dark. And then I realised that all of these things are just like, they're just fears. And they hold you apart from being your true magnificent self. Fears are when we don't trust not only in ourself, but we don't trust in life, and that we don't trust that that um, that this this place where we are is magnificent and wonderful, and it means that our level of consciousness is pretty low because fear vibrates at a very low level, and we want to raise our level of consciousness as much as possible. I mean, we want to really aim for love and above. I mean, that's that's the highest, the best we can go. But most people tend to vibrate. In fact, most people vibrate pretty low, but we want, to, we want to aim high. We always want to aim high. This is why I want to talk about trust. So, trust. When you want to trust, or when you trust in yourself, you lose fears. When you walk around, you don't have that palpitation of like, oh my god, what if somebody does this, what if this happens? You trust in yourself. When you're driving around the country and maybe you don't always do things in the best way, like you do obviously your very best to be as safe as possible, but you trust that everything will be fine. You trust in the other drivers. You trust, you send love ahead of yourself. You trust in your own ability to be as cautious as you possibly can. You trust in the small, tiny details that other people might not trust in. You trust that there is good in others. You trust that you know, your body knows how to heal. You trust in all manner of different things. And when you do that, you move from fear and you move towards love and you stop having so many issues in life. Now, there are people out there, and they have some really hard times, and I've been one of them. I mean, I've had some hard times that I've, I've had to overcome. Um, some pretty traumatic things have happened to me in my life. At one particular occasion in life, I, um, I, I lost a loved one who decided to take his own life. And I found his, found his uh, body with one of my very dear friends and uh, and that was pretty traumatic pretty traumatic and it took me a while to get over that and I remember this very dense feeling of fear going all around me at the time and thinking oh my gosh you know um, you can't trust people you don't know what's going to happen you just... and it was just it took time to lose it and throughout life I have worked in, in in sort of different areas where by a new fear will come up and then I have to dissolve it and then a new fear will come up and I have to dissolve it so as I keep dissolving all these parts of fear it gets clearer and clearer the vibration which means that I'm more able to transcend all of these things that hold me apart from being my highest or my greatest version which of course I'm still working on because I'm forever working on it I think we all are so anyway one of the things I want to mention is that I work with animals and I love animals but there are times when in the past I have been a bit afraid of different animals afraid of what they might do afraid of whether they can be trusted. Are they going to bite? Are they going to do this? Are they going to do that? And it's only really recently that all of those fears 
have disappeared. And the reason they've disappeared is because I realise that it's because of how I feel that those fears and those possibilities exist. And once I start to change how I see things, it's not possible for those things to happen. I'm not saying it's not possible for um, an animal to bite. I'm not saying that. Um, I'm not saying any of those things in the sense of, but I certainly am not going to be in a position where those things could happen to me because my vibration would not be in the same area as that bite unless I was to let it dramatically slip. So the higher you rise in consciousness the more you leave away those low vibrations where this kind of thing happens. So if something traumatic has happened to you in your life, really traumatic, then okay, it could be a call for you to wake up and to rise up. But in all instances, it's because you're vibrating at a lower level and it's because you need to wake up. Something upstairs is saying, hey, I want to get your attention, time to wake up, time to rise you raise your consciousness a little bit more. I think um, the best thing ever is Dr. David Hawkins' map of human consciousness. It's one of the most brilliant charts and it, listening to him discuss it and talk about it is just absolutely wonderful. It's one of my favourite books. I think it came out in 1994, though I didn't read it then. I didn't read it until, gosh, I can't remember sometime in the 2000s. In fact, it probably was around about the time that I'd had that trauma, so that particular trauma I just mentioned, which would have been around about 2009, I suppose I read it, when I was um, studying with the coaching academy. So, move towards love and work to, res to, to uh, dissolve your fears because when you trust in yourself you'll know you'll know that you can put do anything you want to do you'll know that the universe has your back you'll know that there is no such thing as as um, there's just no such thing as all of these awful things all these trying things, all these difficult things, all these hurdles, those are all just limitations. They're not real, they're illusionary. You'll know that those things just aren't real the more you move into your own trusting self. The more you trust yourself, the better life will be. The more you trust in others, the better life will be. And of course, you cannot receive trust if you don't know how to give trust because like everything in this universe it's not about tick 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 you have to give whatever it is that you want that is the way of how things work if you want money you must give money if you want love you must give love if you want kindness you must give kindness if you want prayers you must give prayers it's it's all very simple. It's, you have to be what you want. You do not attract what you want. You attract what you are. So, if you want something, be that something. Anyway, that's what I'd like to say. And um, I hope that shed a little bit of light on trust. Thank you.